Every day, all around us, people are exposed to different sounds and noises in our surrounding environment. It may be the birds in the trees, or a ticking clock. We may be consciously listening to someone talking. Hearing sounds whilst watching the TV. Or listening to music through our earphones. Normally, we hear these everyday sounds at safe levels. But when these sounds become too loud, the sensitive structures in our inner ear may become damaged. Most people know of the risks that loud noises can pose to our hearing. But it's also the length of time that we're exposed to these loud sounds that is just as important. Today, we're going to explore the wonderful world of music and learn how musicians are at risk of noise-induced hearing loss. I'm a music student um, here at Melbourne University, um, so I probably have about, I would guess in total, at least three hours a day, pretty much every day, uh, playing music on my cello. Um, so that's time rehearsing my individual pieces, time with my teacher in lessons, um, and then rehearsals for ensemble groups that I play in. There's no doubt that musicians feel they should practice for many hours in a week to achieve the success that they may be seeking in their career. But in practical terms, it's relatively easy to just practice less or to take longer breaks. It may even be as simple as not practicing as loudly. But for many musicians, when it comes to rehearsing and performing in a large ensemble, such as an orchestra or a band, managing the sound levels becomes a much more complicated issue. Yeah, it does actually get quite loud in an orchestra, often. Um, you can be rehearsing a little bit of the music over and over again, um, which, you know, comes to a very loud point. Um, and when you do that over and over again, I guess that would have a lot more impact on you um, than, for example, an audience member who's sitting, you know, five metres, you know, further away at the very least. Um, and, you know, it doesn't get that repetition of, you know, those particular loud, loud bits. Probably the riskiest environment to be, to be worried about hearing loss is definitely on the stage, particularly at gigs, at, at pubs and, and bars, because uh, generally there's a lot more adrenaline involved and everyone wants to play louder and if everyone else plays louder, you know, you've got to turn yourself up and it just bumps up to a whole other level and that's where most of the hearing loss occurs in musicians that do those sort of gigs. I think if I'm playing in small groups like a quartet or even just a small string orchestra then I probably wouldn't experience that but I know sometimes playing in larger groups especially if you're right behind you know a lot of brass sort of blaring in your ears then sometimes I come out of it you know having that little bit of ringing in my ears and I sometimes think you know is that entirely good for me? <laughs> You feel it, you get that, um, it's like a grinding sound in your ears when you're getting too much, almost too much sound. And, yeah, you know, and then like, afterwards you come yeah. away like a little bit furry and feeling a bit distant. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, especially in a classroom full of kids, one one might be playing guitar, one might be playing bass, you get a trumpet, you get a whole, whole lots of <laughs> instruments too. And sometimes you can control the noise volume as much as you want, but mm -hmm. over a sustained period of time there's definitely going to be damage. Um, if I compare it to my other interactions with music, if I'm listening to my iPod, truth be told, I probably wouldn't feel comfortable putting it up that loud because I would be worried about noise-induced hearing loss. But, you know, within the orchestra setting, you just have to sort of sit there and, you know, have the horns blare in your ears. <laughs> it's, you know. I do know someone who's uh, been quite gravely affected by noise-induced hearing loss. Uh, a bassist who, who was quite well known and was an excellent player. He actually, uh, he played enough gigs without sort of any form of ear protection to the point where he actually had to move out of the city to, to a quieter place in the country to keep what hearing he had left. Okay, so in schools we find that um, long term our colleagues have a lot of hearing loss. Um, we don't notice that so much at our age, but my colleagues who are close to retirement age, sort of 50s, 60s, um, sometimes so much loss that from 
with their back turned to a class, they can't hear anyone misbehaving, which is good for them. Um, so at my age, I haven't noticed much, but um, we tend to get our hearing tested in the schools that I was teaching at. So hmm. everyone had a graph showing where they were at, what partials they'd lost, usually the upper go first, depending on what instruments you teach. Um, and then they could see from year to year if it was getting worse. So, and that's something important to do. Um, but for younger kids, you don't always notice when you're, you know, doing damage to your ears. You don't know until a lot later on. So, you know, we try and make them aware of that, but we can't always do much about it. Although most hearing loss is indeed progressive, and it may be seen as a condition that mainly older people get, what many people don't realise is that it can actually affect people of all ages. A lot of the musicians that I interact with tend to be about my age, so I guess if there is hearing loss going on, we probably don't start to notice it yet. Um, but actually having mentioned that, um, if I think back a couple of years to high school, I did actually know one viola player um, who used to play with his head turned a little bit more maybe towards his instrument than a lot of players would. Um, and so in his left ear he actually started wearing an earplug um, because he started to get a lot of ringing in his left ear. Uh, especially moulded earplugs that uh, you actually have to go to an audiologist to, to have your ears tested and moulded and they'll make you a pair. They're, they're pricey but you know uh, I think having your hearing being a musician is just about priceless, I think. The, the great benefit about the uh, moulded earplugs is they're um, actually designed to level down all the frequencies across the entire spectrum evenly. You can still hear all the musical things as if you didn't have them in, just quieter. Apart from earplugs, there are also many other preventative measures that may be useful in reducing the damaging impact of loud music especially when playing in ensembles. So in, a, in an orchestral situation or a concert band situation, there's um, these great little things called baffles. Um, this is an actual baffle, but it just explains the, the concept behind it. It, um, it works by shielding the player in front's entire head from the player at the back. So for example, if you know, triple forte, the, um, the player in front won't, uh, won't receive too much of that and they'll be able to actually hear themselves and not obviously suffer any damage. It depends on if you're thinking about in the performance scenario or if you're teaching as well. So I'll start with teaching. Um, being really careful with the space that you teach in. So small rooms as opposed to, to big rooms. And especially if you're thinking about if you're teaching a brass instrument um, or you're teaching a high woodwind instrument, that can have you know pretty brutal effects in the long term as well. And classroom teaching. So in terms of orchestra playing and ensemble playing, um, if you're not an acoustic that is good for loud sounds, you need to make allowances for that. We don't always get the chance to, but if we get baffles, we're happy. Yep. So that's for protecting you from behind from the brass section. Mm -hmm. um, the piccolo, I'll just point to Carmen. Yeah. <laughs> she was playing one Sorry. to nine. But sitting right next to the piccolo plays a real problem, yep. um, depending on the repertoire and the volume and again the acoustic space. It depends on the awareness of the school as well. So if you've got a, pre a school the school I work at, a private school, um, they have a decibel meter, so you know if the level of volume and intensity of sound in the room is too much, the power shuts off. So I mean it sounds pretty extreme, but it's it needs to be extreme because you need to go, okay, we need to fix this and there's a way that we need to show the kids, you know, we have to stop. It's when you build up the sound, you don't always get yeah. The, yeah, as it builds up gradually, you don't notice it. Mm. A loud sound suddenly you'll notice. You adjust away, to it after a while. Yeah, even so they it's probably won't notice when it's getting so loud to yeah. damage their ears unless something tells them to. So whether you're a music teacher who deals with classes full of children making music, or a performing musician who plays in an orchestra, it is quite clear to see that noise exposure is extremely high in many aspects of a professional musician's career. The fact is, Noise-induced hearing loss may occur in people of all ages. All musicians, therefore, need to be aware of the various methods of prevention that are available, from earplugs to the acoustics of the room, or maybe even just going to the audiologist to have a regular hearing test. For something that is 100% preventable, and knowing how valuable the ability to hear is for any performing musician, clearly prevention is the key and that awareness of this real-life issue early on in life 
essential to preserving a musician's hearing.